Welcome back. Seven out of 10 Catholics in America in a new New York Times poll say the abuse scandal in the church now makes the Vatican less relevant to their lives. This is a bad time in the Catholic Church, which is tonight without a sitting pope after the abdication of Benedict. The cardinals gather on Tuesday to select the new man. First, they want to know what's in a secret 300-page report of mostly leaked documents. Well, tonight, Richard Engel reports on the swirl of intrigue and turmoil at the Vatican that a lot of people may not be aware of. And for the first time, we meet the man who helped expose it. The 109-acre Vatican City is off-limits to most Italians. It's sovereign church territory, ringed by stone walls. And some say it may be holding a huge secret, as speculation continues about why the Pope stepped down. The 85-year-old Pope said he was too tired and too old to go on. But several Vatican experts and investigative journalists say that's only part of the reason. Their theory is that the Pope did not have the strength to deal with power struggles and financial and sexual scandals inside the Vatican, and that his resignation was an act of sacrifice to save the Catholic Church. A big reason so many people believe this controversial theory is because of this man, John Luigi Nuzzi, one of Italy's top investigative journalists. Are you the man who brought down the Pope? No. no. How can you think a journalist can bring down a pope? But this journalist exposed some of the Vatican's most guarded secrets, a scoop seen in Italy as big as Watergate. Italians call it Vati Leaks. For Nuzzi, now an NBC consultant, it began with a phone call from a friend who wanted to introduce him to a whistleblower with extraordinary access the Pope's private butler, Paolo Gabriele. He was nervous in the first meeting. Lui era sicuramente non, non tranquillo al primo incontro. This is where you met him. Neither one of us could have imagined what he would lead to. What pushed Gabriele to meet you here? He was the shadow of the Pope, and he felt the Pope was not capable of overcoming certain problems. The Pope's butler wanted to pass Nuzzi about a hundred pages of documents he'd photocopied and smuggled out of the Pope's own apartment. It was a cloak and dagger operation with meetings between Nuzzi and the butler in public squares, conversations only by public telephones. So this is the phone booth that you were using? Yeah. And why did you want to use a landline? Because it would be harder to track? When Nuzzi met the butler at his apartment, they used a code name, Maria. And here on this, so that he would know which one to push, you, put, you wrote Maria? Yeah. You wrote his code name on the buzzer. Yeah. That's the Why were the meetings so covert? Because Gabriele thought the Vatican was following him, spying on him, because he was so close to the Pope. There was a lot at stake. Big money, big secrets, information the Vatican did not want to reveal. For a minute, forget that the Vatican is a church. It's also a state a very rich one. Its real estate alone is worth billions. And that's just the buildings, the palaces and monasteries, not the art they contain, much of it priceless. The Vatican also runs a bank. If you follow this crisis to its basic core, it's about the money, isn't it? I think that's right. I think um, money is power and power is money. Philip Weiland is one of the world's experts on the Vatican Bank and says it was set up like an offshore bank, designed to be closed and discreet so that it could send money, for example, to priests in countries where they faced persecution. But the bank's secrecy has also fueled a history of scandal, including allegations that it has laundered money for the mafia. Today, there is the suspicion that uh, it has become a, an instrument for uh, laundering money for corrupt Italian politicians and businessmen, for members of the uh, Italian social elite. The Vatican Bank has denied allegations of corruption, but in 2009, the Pope tasked an archbishop named Carlo Maria Viganò to clean up the Vatican's finances. And Viganò started to ask some tough questions about possible kickbacks, favoritism, and how the Vatican's money was being spent. That is a real problem for the Vatican because if you open the books on the past, all sorts of 
very unsavory things emerge. One of the letters smuggled out by the Pope's butler was from Bigano. He wrote that he was being slandered and sidelined from the inside. Did Gabriele bring you that letter from Bigano? Bigano was eventually transferred off the case to become the Vatican's representative to Washington. That reportedly outraged the butler and encouraged him to start leaking documents. We're told the butler thought he was actually helping the Pope to reform the Vatican. When Nutzi published those documents and put them in a book, His Holiness, The Secret Papers of Benedict XVI, the book became a bestseller, and the scandal became an international whodunit. The butler's identity was still unknown at the time. In disguise, he told Nutzi why he broke an ancient code of silence. There's a kind of omerta, a code of silence, not to make the real truth emerge, not due to the fight for power, but due to fear. But the Vatican's police eventually figured out the butler did it. He was charged with stealing documents and sentenced to 18 months in Vatican custody. Pope Benedict later pardoned him. We found Gabriele on a quiet street in Rome, on his way to his new low-profile job at a Catholic hospital. Many believe the butler was not acting alone. The butler described himself as an infiltrator for the Holy Spirit in the, in the Vatican. Uh, in a sense, I think he thought he was making history. Uh, and I think, given the way things turned out, uh, he really did. The butler's leaked documents did not only point to financial cover-ups, but also suggested a twisted web of money, power, and sex. One of the issues that emerges is the number of people in the Vatican who uh, are engaged in practices that the Vatican doesn't accept. Author Carmelo Abate is another investigative journalist who thinks the Pope didn't resign only because of his health. Abate went undercover at a nightclub near the Vatican and shot this video with a hidden camera. And this one in the pink, he's the priest. See, the man in the center is a priest. After the priest went dancing in the nightclub and had sex, he put on his vestments and prepared to deliver mass. You did research, pretending to be someone who was gay, looking for relations with a priest. What did you find? I found a hidden sexuality very widespread within the church. Not a sexuality at peace with itself, but compulsive and obsessive. A sexuality that stems from depression from priests who blow off steam with alcohol, drugs and pornography. The Vatican responded in a statement. Priests who are living a double life should not have become priests. To investigate what Vati Leaks exposed, Pope Benedict took a dramatic step. Almost a year ago, he appointed three cardinals, all retired from the Vatican and all independent, to look into the allegations swirling of corruption and sex. The report they delivered, after eight months of work, is sealed and secret for the Pope's eyes only. But experts suspect the 300-page report may have been disturbing to read, because around that time, the Pope told his biographer he was tired and not to expect more from him. And two months later, he resigned, the first Pope to abdicate in 600 years. But then, what about the report? Some cardinals say they need to know what it contains so they can make a wise decision choosing the next Pope. Cardinal Francis George is from Chicago. I think we're going to ask for the information we feel we need in order to make a good uh, choice. Part of that uh, situation is uh, what went wrong, that we had this uh, breach of confidence in the governance of the Holy See. For many Vatican watchers, the mystery remains. Why did the Pope step down? Because he was old? Because he wanted to run from a scandal? Or because he thought his resignation was the only way to force a shakeup. My view is that uh, it was a very courageous act, actually. Perhaps at the end of the day, it will be seen as the defining moment of, it, of his papacy and his real legacy. It also clearly shows his successor that there's a real crisis here. You've really got to get to grips with it. So the only way for him to bring down those around him was to fall on his own sword. I think that's right. People have said this was not just his resignation, it was a way of firing everybody. Perhaps we'll never know for sure why the Pope resigned, 
It may be the one Vatican secret that will never be revealed.